Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12, Romans chapter 4 verse 13, and Acts chapter 8 verse 17. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for helping us to realize that you've forgiven us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there is, oh, not if there, um, first scripture is Hebrews chapter eight, verse 12, for I will be merciful toward their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. So um, if you have a past right now, um, remember it is not um, your good deeds that gave you salvation. It is Christ alone right and so when you look back at your past remember the viewpoint that you look back at your past as is not the same viewpoint as what God looks back at it as he sees it as as not even something that he remembers right he has wiped the memory of that the stain of that you know sometimes our memory can stain things and and we can look back and see ourselves in disdain right in shame and God is wanting us to realize that as as his perspective when he looks at us um he doesn't remember our iniquities right he'll be merciful toward our iniquities doesn't mean that they weren't there he's going to show mercy meaning that the the soul that our our iniquities deserved instead of giving us that sword he's going to be merciful he's going to reach out and put his ring out you can kiss his ring and he's good you're good to go right that's what receiving Christ is it's like having the mercy of the king having him put his hand on your head rather than um him striking you with his scepter right when you came before a king his soldiers would most likely be the one who delivered the punishment of coming up to him but because of God's mercy um, when he when you come to him he doesn't have that right it's like you're his child coming to the king right it's you're coming even a child would could have been punished for coming to the king even with death um, but it, it's it's an area where we're now accepted into the court, right? Even the king's wife could be banished or killed for coming to the king without being summoned. And so now we can come freely and boldly. Why? Because he's pouring out this great cup of mercy towards those who have received his son. And so it says, for I will be merciful toward their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more right? They can come, we can come boldly. We can come into his, his courtroom, into his throne room and, and receive everything we need. That's what the, the grace is all about, right? We can get what we need. We can find what we need, um, before the King. And so, um, it's kind of like, you know, the King that has a favorite, right and and you know everybody else is on his bad side but then you he has the favorite who can do whatever right we're not doing whatever but um when we receive Christ we can come in and boldly come as a son amen all right and so the the second scripture that the Lord gave me was Romans chapter 4 verse 13 for the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law but through the righteousness of faith so it was solely his belief in God that allowed this promise to be um, spoken and manifested right um, he believed what God said about it and and that was it right he didn't he never actually saw this offspring that would just be as numerous as the stars he saw his son right but he did not see the manifestation of all of the things that God had promised but he knew that they would be true why because he just believed he believed God what God had said he didn't have to see it for himself he believed God and so because he believed God, he was accounted as righteousness, not because of his deeds, but because of his mindset, his heart towards God and in that he moved based on what he believed, right? Um, his belief that initial seed is, is his righteousness, not the things that followed the seed that, that belief, 
right? And so um, it says, for the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. And, and he he is a, a heir of the world, right? Why? Because the seed that comes from him um, are all his children, right? And the seed that comes from him is a seed of righteousness through faith and that is a beautiful position to hold because it is saying that I'm I'm not going to remember your sins, right? I'm not going to remember the sins of those who who walk in that same action of belief in you. I say walk in that action, but it's belief itself, right? Not the deeds that follow, just the belief. All right. And so um that is righteousness. Righteousness is 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 the actual belief in Christ and um, the the benefit of being righteous is that he's going to remember our sins no more. Um, and so the second verse that the Lord gave me was Acts chapter eight, verse 17. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. All right. And so this is... Um, the receiving of the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, it will change your life, right? Salvation is a beautiful gift. It is the best gift ever. But receiving the Holy Spirit is is for the rest of the walk, right? It is for the direction. It is Christ dwelling in you, right? Him actually coming into your physical person and your mind and helping lead you and guide you into all truth, opening your eyes to the the beauty of holiness, right? Uh, the beauty of God and being able to be led um, by God, right? Um, God not looking at man and saying, you're filthy. I don't want to be around you, right? No, now because we have that righteous covering, Holy Spirit um, can be received into us and we can actually walk and dwell in God in our earth bodies, right? And so um, this is a great gift. This is a beautiful blessing um, as a part of salvation. And I mean, these two things together, Holy Spirit, um, well, actually three things, Holy Spirit, righteousness, and the forgiveness of our sins are foundational to what we believe. They are faith is the the core and the essence of our our believers walk right and and if you don't have faith in Christ then you have nothing right you need faith in Christ and what he did his salvation um and and his blood atonement for your sins in order to walk in the fullness of God and that fullness comes when he um when he covers you with his blood and then the holy spirit comes into you amen so receive that power that that power is going to take you to the next step the faith is the first step um and and when you have that faith, you're you're covered by the blood and your sins are not counted against you anymore. Um, he's not going to um, remember them and, and he's going to be merciful toward your iniquities. But then that that last step is that receiving of that Holy Spirit, that seal on you until the day of redemption. That is how you walk daily. It is, it is how you um, go forth from that um, initial step step of faith in Christ. Amen. All right, you guys. Um, and the Holy Spirit allows you to, to, to just operate in the power of God. Um, it builds you up in your spirit. Um, it allows you to walk in, in victory. It allows you to manifest miracles. It allows you to know which direction to take decisions in your life everything from what to wear to how to make the next move in your life right like your next job your next um your partner your your children decisions with your children you need holy spirit he is he is the guide right and and many christians and believers we operate in a very minimalist way in the holy spirit but holy spirit wants total control 
And, and when we do that, when we allow him using the measure of our faith that has been given to us, total control to the Holy Spirit, we can just walk on water. We can do anything. We All things are possible um, to him who believes, right? We have the power of Christ in us. And, and so the Holy Spirit is the manifestation of that power. It's the one that leads us and guides us into all truth. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your power manifested in us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you that even if we don't see the manifestation of everything right at this moment, we know your Holy Spirit is with us and is leading us and guiding us into all truth. And we're going to get there. We say thank you. We praise you, God. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to rededicate your heart to the Lord, um, maybe you have walked away from God or fallen away from God, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I need Holy Spirit. I need direction. I need guidance. I need to be back closer to you. Jesus, lead me and guide me into all truth with your Holy Spirit. Show me the way again. I've gotten off track. I want to get up and turn around and go in the direction you're going. Forgive me for my sins, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Let me be ready when you come, Lord. Amen. All right, you guys. If you prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then Holy Spirit is guiding you. He's still guiding you. He, and you're going to hear his voice louder and louder the more that you are are open to Holy Spirit. Um, so don't ignore him. Don't grieve Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, and so um, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray those prayers and you believe those prayers, then Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to do just that. Amen. One of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. All right, you guys take care and be blessed. Oh, and also don't forget to not forsake um, going to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys take care.